Hey guys, Black Wolf, and I'm reading chapter 36. Those Rest Men dis decided to begin in the dungeons and work their way up, so we made our way to the upper floor, keeping ourselves as far as the men as possible. This is a terrible idea, Tobias whispered as we walked. If they do get into, get into the tunnels, we'll be trapped. Then we go into the roof and make our escape there. I said. Ron's eyes widened, but he nodded his agreement. Tobias seemed even more anxious. The roof and we f and fall toward us. I've been there, I said, and we won't fall. Then let's go now, Roden whispered. There's too much of a chance of us being spotted if he sent men to search the grounds or guards the door or guard the doors. Those guys is no fool, so we must expect that he's done that. Going up to the roof is our last option. We reached the upper floor using a tunnel that put us near the nursemaid's bedroom. I wonder if any children who once lived here had to use the tunnels to play tricks on their cup caregivers. It was. It's what I would have done. Temporarily safe from Villagrass men, Rode nodded at the emerald box in my hands. Is that box Villagrass? Is that the box Villagrass is talking about? Probably. What's in it? It's locked. You don't seem curious, Tobias said. I'd have to break the box to get in there, and they, I won't do that. Whatever its contents, we'll find out soon enough. There was a moment of silence, and then Rode asked, Sage, did you know you look so much like the prince? I have felt that I looked more like myself than anyone else. I grinned and shrugged. I'm too s scarred for a prince. Too many cal cal calluses and rough edges. A similar face may not be enough besides what we saw is only a painting, an artist's interpretation of what Jaren looked like. Have either of you ever seen a royal family in person? Neither of them had. Roden observed quite accurately the royal ra rarely visited orphanage or orphanages or invited poor orphans to seek dinners. The king came through Karchar about a year ago, I said, so I stood on the street to see him. He looks right at me as we passed. I could have sworn he did. Everyone was supposed to bow to him, but I didn't. Why not, Tobias said. Honestly, Sage, you have have you no respect? An Avinian bowed to a Carthian king? Wouldn't that dishonor the king of Avinia? Tobias's groan was muffled by Rodin, who asked, So what happened? A soldier clubbed me across my calves. That sent me to my knees, and I was in no hurry to get back up again. For a moment, I thought King Ekbert would stop the entire procession, but he didn't. He only shook his head and continued on. Rodin chuckled softly. It's a wonder you lived so long. If Connor doesn't choose you, it will only be because you're too reckless to trust on the throne. I can't deny that. My point is that people don't always look the same in real life as they do in their paintings. My resemblance to a five-year-old painting doesn't matter. Facing the regions, the regions is a real test. We immediately fell, s fell silent when footsteps clambered up the stairs near us. How many? Tobias knelt. I shook my head. Maybe four or five men, but it was impossible to tell for sure. We heard several other men on the floor below us. They spread out, each one of them taking one area of the upper floor to search. One of Connor's servants was with them to open any long door or cupboard. There was a lot of storage up here. One man said, "All the better for a hiding place." Another said, "Check every bed, or check every trunk beneath every bed." He wouldn't hide a prince in a dusty room like this. We searched everywhere. The first man ordered. My spirits lifted a little. There was no mention of secret passageways, which there would have been if any entrances had been found. It didn't appear that they even suspected the tunnels were in the house. Suddenly, Tobias grabbed my arm. He leaned very close to me and whispered, I hid papers in our bedroom. I hid papers in our bedroom. If they find them, they'll know we were here. I threw up my hands in a gesture to ask him where the papers were. He leaned in again. I cut a small hole in the side of my mattress. If they move it, feathers will fall out and they'll see the hole. He drew back with an apologetic look on his face, but I could only shake my head. Judging by the thoroughness of the search on this floor, it was too much a risk that they might find those papers. I motioned for them to stay where they were. My feet moved qu quietly enough that I could pass through the tunnel undetected. Tobias and Roden might not. I crept down the narrow stairs of the tunnel. One of the steps was loose, and I was concerned that when I pulled off the wood plank, it would make too much noise, like it had before. There were a few small squeaks, but it, I moved so slowly they didn't seem to draw any attention. The imitation of Prince Jaren's sword was lodged inside a house. I hoped I wouldn't have to use it, but I wasn't about to go out there without a weapon of some sort. With the sword in my hand, I inched open the door to our bedroom. A few men still remained on our floor, but they seemed to be nearer to Connor's room. I didn't think they'd come my way yet. 
A bedroom door had been scrubbed of any evidence of her being there. Now it looked like a, a little guest room. The wardrobes were empty. Our books were gone, and the beds were pushed into a line of three near the wall. Tobias's bed was the farthest from my hiding place. I crept along the floor, hardly suitable for a gentleman, or whatever Connor had turned me into, but very familiar from my life as an orphan. Once in a conversation with Mr. Belby, I compared myself to a caterpillar that went wherever I wanted, with barely any notice. She compared me to a cockroach instead, who ran about freely in the darkness and scattered in the light. It was meant as an insult, but I thought it was fair comparison, even as a com even a compliment judging by how hard they are to catch. I crawled beneath what had been my old bed and then rodents finally said Tobias is last in line. I was about to reach my arm up to feel around his mattress and then froze. Plus us were coming down the stairs. We're going to search this floor now, the man in charge of the other said. Jolston, we need your men in here now, someone called from the hallway near Connor's room. There's a lot of heavy furniture in here, so we can the sore backs and he gets all the glory in whatever we find. Someone outside my room complained, but they went anyway. I only had a few minutes. It was simple to find the hole in Tobias' mattress. He cut it well, so that it would always remain covered in, so that no feathers would fall from it unless the mattress was overturned. The papers were right inside, tightly folded. I tucked them into my pocket and then crawled out of the doors. I was about to dart safely into the tunnels when a voice said, Did, you he did anyone hear that? Like footsteps inside the walls. I rolled my eyes. Was it Rodin's or Tobias's carelessness that would have revealed us? It's, it sounded as if the man began to call out someone's name. Then he cried out in pain. I pressed myself against the wall, and only a second later, Mogan ran into my room, looking for a place to hide. In her hands was a fireplace poker. She must have had the man with it. My heart pounded, and Mogan was successfully distracted, distracted him from the tunnels, but she was about to pay dearly for Mogan for having saved us. Oh, wow. Okay. So that was chapter 36. Um, actually, I finished that quicker than I thought. Um, like I said, like the usual, the books I have, I'm going to write them down. The movies that I have, or the games that I have, I'm going to write them down. You can, you can tell me what you want to see me do, com uh, challenges, or songs, no class words, because I'm in middle school. And uh, the next one will be Lost Prince. Uh, I can't think of the name for a minute. The False Prince Audiobook Part 37. And it will be really short because it's literally only like the front and back of the page. So, uh, yep, subscribe and I'll see you next time.